Welcome back to our Giro d'Italia coverage here on GCN and Eurosport. Today it was stage 8, the start of a big weekend of climbing at the race. 170 kilometres to Guardia San Flamondi, only two categorised climbs along the way, but plenty of other lumps and bumps there too. The biggest climb of the day peaked with exactly 50 k's to go, 20 kilometres long, but with only a 4.6% average gradient, you weren't expecting any major fireworks from the GC favourites. They would, however, need to remain alert at the finish, with the line located at the top of a 3 kilometre climb. It wasn't all about the climbing today though, the wind was blowing across the plains at the start of the stage which caused a lot of nervousness in the bunch and in fact we'd have over 60 kilometres of constant attacking before a breakaway finally managed to pull clear. In that period double stage winner Caleb Ewan abandoned the race with knee pain. In the break we had Gossens, Gaviria, Lafay, Oliveira, Carboni, Gavazzi, Gujar, Arndt and eventually after a 10 minute 405 watt chase Victor Campenarts made it a nine man group. With the best placed rider over a quarter of an hour down on this man on GC, Groupama FDG could afford to take things relatively easy behind, the gap quickly growing towards five minutes just before the midway point of the stage. Gaviria was the man most interested in picking up points at the first intermediate sprint today, and it was a relatively easy run into that line for him, 12 points added to his tally in that competition. With just over 60 k's to go, it looked almost certain that our stage winner would come from that front group. Seven and a half minutes their advantage as they tackled the biggest climb of the day. And it was only a matter of time before we had our first attack from that break. And it was Fernando Gaviria who made it, clearly looking to get a head start before the final climb. But soon after, disaster. Thankfully he did get back on his bike, but his chances of the stage win looks to be over. He did manage to get back to the group though, having visited the race doctor. There's no doubt that must have knocked the stuffing out of the Colombian rider from UAE Team Emirates. Coming into the closing stage of the race and the gap was still significant, so the break knew they'd be fighting it out between them and so it was a very cagey affair on the run into the final climb. I don't know what Campanarts had for breakfast this morning, but it clearly gave him a lot of energy. He attacked time and time again and eventually got away with Carboni of Bardiani. However, once the road began to rise, he began to pave his earlier efforts and Carboni was off in search of his team's first stage win for five years. Behind them, Victor Lafayette of Cofferdis wasted no time in going on the attack and pulling clear of his breakaway companions and he was flying. He caught Campanarts and sailed past him and a few moments later he did exactly the same thing to Carboni. It's been 11 years since Team Cofidis last took a stage win at the Giro d'Italia. Viviani has come close, but it would be La Fay who would end that long drought. A dominant and well-deserved win, and like Gino Meda before him, the Giro has given him his first pro win at the age of 25. Behind the break, the fight amongst the GC contenders never really materialised. It would be Joao Almeida who'd lead a large group in, with all the main favourites contained within it. This is how the top 10 on the day looked then. Lafay announcing himself to the cycling world and giving France their first win of the race. And it was, in the end, a comfortable margin of victory. 36 seconds over Gavaxi. In the GC, no major changes in the top 10, but Luis Verveca did lose some time, slipping five places down to 10th. Everybody else gaining themselves a place on GC as a result. And so the rain in pink continues for Attila Valter, for Kampama FDG and for Hungary. He'll face a big test tomorrow though, Stage 9 has been given a 4 star rating by the race organisers and the finish line will mark the highest point of the race thus far. That climbing begins pretty much from kilometre zero, they'll crest the Paso Godi after 36 k's and there are further 4 categorised climbs after that, including the one to the finish line at Campo Felice with the final 1.6 k's featuring a gravel road and 14% gradients. You don't want to miss it, so we hope to have you with us for our live coverage on GCN Plus from 11.55 CEST. Territory restrictions apply. See you tomorrow.